Hi guys, it's Cassidy Guard and welcome to Cassidy Cast. I'm kind of speechless. I cannot believe I have Karen Gandhi on my I'm show so today. I'm so to be here right now. I uh, recently watched your TEDx talk um, on Atomic Living. You speak about growing up and liking all these different things yeah. right now at this day and time. Like, what is it that's fueling you? My main pillars right now, I would say, are my commitment to gender equality and to feminism. Um, playing the drums and writing music, mm -hmm. and innovating in the music industry. I'm an artist in residence right now at a company down the road actually called STEM. I'm going to be there later this afternoon. Um, and then my fourth main pillar, main focus, is really like a commitment to my friends and family, just trying to mm -hmm. be more there for them. Um, because sometimes when we're so consumed with everything that we're doing, we forget about like the main people in our lives, and so I've been trying to be better about that. But yeah, with Atomic Living, you know, the main thing is just when I was young and growing up, I always felt like you have to choose one thing or sort of the messaging that we tell to the young people is what's your 20 year plan and like who's your hero and how do we make you that person? And I think instead it should be about how do you take the things that you love organically that you're doing when no one else is watching and how can you make that its own successful thing? And that was really the mentality behind Atomic Living. Oh, I feel like with you so many aspects of your life to me on the outside just kind of aligned with all of your different interests, what was the one that was the most surprising to you or unexpected? Um, you know, I think it was actually the fact that I was a math major and that was the thing that got me my first job in the music <laughs> industry. Like that is true atomic living. I was um, an intern at Interscope Records right after college and my mm -hmm. parents were super embarrassed on my behalf that I was the only senior it seemed who didn't have a real job after school. The head of the digital marketing department found out that I was a math major <laughs> and she was so happy. She was like, this is so useful, you know? We have all this data coming in from Spotify and from YouTube and we need to start organizing it such that we have internal benchmarks. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we get 500k streams on Spotify in the first week for a Z release or a Vici right. release, is that good or is that a disaster? Like we had no Barometer, sense. Right? Exactly. Because yeah. if we sold a hundred, a 500k iTunes sales, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But a stream is not, you know, a single. So we had no comparison. So I think probably the most unexpected is that my journey into the music industry started because I was a math major. So math to Interscope. Now, did you ever figure out how exactly the MIA crew found you? Was it through Interscope it or was totally separate? Totally through Interscope. I was at Interscope and I love a lot of the artists uh, signed to the roster, but I don't love any of them as much as I love the MIA. It's crazy! <laughs> and um, I remember finding out just like in the internal emails that she was working on her next album. And I know how the album cycle goes. You know, you put out a single, one or two music videos, and then it's the album, and then you start touring. Mm -hmm. And since I saw that, that was the direction that she was going, I, I had, and I had seen her many years ago when she played right after Thievery Corporation, when I was playing with Thievery at the time. And I remember thinking that moment, it was 2010 when I thought this on her stage. I was like, she's a DJ, and she has her, she needs a drummer. Half her music is just so percussion heavy. Yeah. And I remember just kind of like jokingly pitching that internally at Interscope to her product manager. And her product manager took me seriously and was like, oh, okay, like if you're for real, send me a video. So I sent them a video. Maya responded directly to me. This was in 2013 at Interscope. And um, she was like, I like the video, um, it's super cool, we're not thinking about the tour yet, but I'll hit you up when we do. What was that day like? That you was didn't even know that it was ridiculous. <laughs> I was so happy. Honestly, like, if your favorite artist emails you and tells you you're good at your craft, which in my case was drumming, you're a mate. Like, I was already <laughs> good. Like, I swear, I was good. And uh, at that point, like a month later, I had, I had been applying to business school, I got into Harvard, I accepted, um, and then I left Interscope. And I was thinking I'm just going to have like a bummed out summer, I was in New Orleans, <laughs> I was in Europe, like doing nothing. And then I actually got a follow up email from her team, which was, okay, so the tour, here, it's here are the dates, it's happening, Japan, Canada, the US, um, Argentina, Chile, like let's go. So I ended up doing it that summer and also while I was at business school. That's insane. It was great. It was like, I, you said, the best time. You said the most amazing thing, which was that you were on the plane with her yes. and that you were just kind of like, your worlds collided yes. when you're going over yes. your homework with her. Right. I right. was. Because you know why I did that? Because it was a case on the NFL. 
who she, I don't know if you know the history, but she has a huge clashing with the uh, NFL because in 2012 she performed with Nicki Minaj and Madonna, which is an amazing mm -hmm. show. And she's rapping, 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 and as you know, when you're rapping, you use your fingers, and there's a curse word, so she just gave the finger mm -hmm. while saying the word fuck, and the word fuck was bleeped out right. because she gave the finger to the camera, and I guess they couldn't bleep that out quickly enough. She got sued. And it was horrible, and it was not fair, and I, I was completely on her side. But I thought it was just, yeah, it was particularly funny because we were flying back together from Mexico City, and we were sitting next to each other. And um, that was the case that I had, and she gave me her true opinion. What about happened her with that? I mean, she just told me about, she actually told me about her religion at that time, yeah. which was pretty cool. Um, she told me about circles and squares and triangles, this notion that some of us are knowledge seekers, mm -hmm. some of us are um, reincarnated good people. <laughs> yes, which one are you, little one? <laughs> and then um, some of us are triangles in which we step on the toes of others, on the backs of the shoulders of others um, to advance ourselves. And those people are people who go to Harvard Business School. According I've to never her. heard of this. She's it very private it. about it. I mean, maybe sometimes it's woven well, into I've never her heard lyrics. of it in general. But it's her religion. It's so she thought she this. came up with this. Yes. That's incredible. Right. right. And so that was the moment she told me about it. And, um, you know, she said to me, she's like, Kira, a lot of you all go in as knowledge seekers, you know, the squares. But you come out as triangles, which is learning how to step on the shoulders of others to advance yourselves. And I'm concerned that that might happen to you. And right. it scared me because I was like, no, no, I'm just going in, you know, as a spot, like for for yeah. all the for all the, the musicians people. who I want to help, right? Because yeah. I'm like, no musician that I know has the opportunity to go to a place like this, and no consultant I know has the sort of ability or the desire to help a lot of musicians or other people who could use this information mm -hmm. for good. Um, so I felt it was kind of like I'm just trying to fight fire with fire over here.